So guys, a man who shot dead a businessman in a bungled robbery and then fled to Pakistan has finally been jailed, seven years after the brutal killing. Tahir Zarif blasted Akhtar Javid at his Direct Source 3 warehouse in Digbeth in Birmingham on February the 3rd, 2016, as he and a number of other men tried to stage a £100,000 heist. He had tied the hands of the 56-year-old business owner and fired three warning shots, one of which hit the victim's leg. But Mr Javid refused his demands to open the safe, managed to get his hands free and pushed past him in an attempt to escape. Tragically, Zarif unloaded two more deadly shots hitting the victim in his throat and mouth. He then went on the run for two years before being detained in Mirpur in 2018 and extradited back to the UK in 2020. The 32-year-old admitted conspiracy to rob and two counts of possessing a firearm with the intent to cause fear of violence and after a trial, he was found guilty of murder. And at Birmingham Crown Court today, he was branded a coward by Mr Javid's devastated son and daughter and sentenced to life with a minimum term of 30 years. The judge, Nigel Godsmark, told the killer, on any account your actions were ruthless, greedy and without thought for anyone else. He said Zarif had a clear willingness to use the gun he was carrying, adding the three warning shots would have been terrifying for Mr Javid. Judge Godsmark also ruled that Zarif had an intention to kill when he fired the fatal shots and his actions were not affected by the numerous mental health issues put forward as part of his defence. So guys, I'll go through the full case in a moment. The judge acknowledged his long sentence would be depressing, if not overwhelming, but asked, what about the impact on the Javid family? What about the sentence you imposed on them? We have heard their agonised statements, a loving family man torn away from them on a day he had gone on a normal day's work. A widow still mourns him, children devastated a family who were unable to attend his body in the manner their faith requires. Grandchildren who will never know him. The effect ripples down the generations. Seven years on, the loss of actor Javid is still acutely and intensely felt. So just want to say, rest in peace Mr Javid and my condolences go out to your family. So guys, the court also heard that the Digbeth robbery shared disturbing parallels to one Zahir had committed previously where he had held a knife up to a woman's throat at a bookmaker's and demanded she open the safe. His defence lister argued the Digbeth incident was a planned as a robbery, not a premeditated plan to kill. He stated Zahir had shown genuine remorse and pointed to his mental health issues, including schizophrenia. So guys, I'm just going to go through the case now. So when three members of the original gang were convicted back in 2016, Mr Javid's daughter said, I do not want us to forget that there is still one outstanding perpetrator on the run as it still stands literally getting away with murder. I have faith that the justice system will do its best to bring him back and bring him to justice. I would be saddened to think he has got away with it as what message does that give to society? However, today speaking on behalf of the family, she said, it's been six years and nine months since my father's life was taken by Tahir Zarif. My father has been in our thoughts every day since. As I have said before, my father was an honourable gentleman. Another man's greed led to my father's unlawful death. We are grateful to Westminster's police for their hard work in ensuring justice is served. Detective Inspector Ranj Sanga added, Despite most of the gang being jailed for this horrific crime back in 2016, we refused to rest until Zarif, who fired the fatal shots, was brought back to justice. We work really closely with partners in this country and in Pakistan to get this result and I hope Mr Akhtar's family can get some sense of closure from today. So guys, I vividly remember this case. I believe it was either a fast food warehouse or a drinks warehouse where this incident occurred and Mr Akhtar lost his life. I just want to say rest in peace, Mr Akhtar, and my condolences go out to your family. So he was shot in the foot, leg, throat and mouth as he fought off the gunman who burst into his cash and carry armed with pistols. During the original trial, out of respect for the family, the judge ordered members of the public to leave the courtroom shortly before Mr Javid was shown being shot repeatedly as he fought for his life. Robert's grandfather, and he was one of six members of staff working at the Direct Source 3 Limited Depot in Digbeth when Suraj Mystery Tahir Zarif stormed in and demanded cash from the safe. It's alleged they used plastic cable to bind his hands and his terrified colleagues in the company office and threatened to execute them unless the boss handed over thousands of pounds of cake -ins. 
He was marched into the corridor at gunpoint and Zarif opened fire with a silenced repeater pistol as he made a break for the exit with his hands still tied. The dad of four managed to stagger outside but collapsed on the pavements and he died instantly from choking on his own blood as the raiders fled empty-handed in a silver Renault Magan driven by a 19-year-old Lemar Wali. The mystery was arrested after police raided his business in Derby and they found a detailed map of Mr Javi's warehouse written on the back of a water bill. It had been supplied by an ex-employee who was made redundant just days before the robbery. Mystery was a car body shop director and the getaway driver Wally was a student mechanic. CCTV shown in court that day showed Wally's Megan drive through the entrance of Mr Javid's business and pull into a parking space. Zarif then jumped out followed by Mystery carrying a backpack. The mass robbers bolted into the reception of the warehouse carrying handguns and storm a meeting room where they find two members of staff sat at a conference table. Zarif pointed his repeater pistol at the men while Mystery took their phone and marched them into the office. Meanwhile, a member of staff returned from the warehouse and stumbled across the holdup. He made a run for the door but was grabbed by Zarif and pushed into the office. Mr Javid, who is wearing a woolly hat, is then ordered out of the office at gunpoint and Zarif leads him into a corridor where Mr Mystery stays behind to keep the staff subdued. The jury saw Mr Javid backing away with his hands held up as he was stalked by Zarif and shot in the foot for refusing to hand over the cash. He hobbled backwards through the corridor followed by Zarif who allegedly took aim at his leg and fired. Defenseless Mr Javid then tried to make a desperate effort to escape lunging at the gunman who shot him in the throat and mouth as they fought. Mr Javid was then seen limping out the reception door leaving a trail of blood as he exited the building and made it out onto the street. Zarif ran back to the office to warn Mystery and the pair fled in Wally's getaway car. At the time the prosecutor James Curtis QC told the jury, Zarif pointed his gun at the centre of Mr Akhtar's chest, gesturing him to get out. Akhtar was unarmed, defenceless and helpless. He is not running anywhere, both his hands are tied. Look at the gun. You can see the muzzle flip as the gunman fires, then he aims straight at his head. He has clearly been shot and he can't use his left leg. Wounded though, he fights back. They go into the reception area but he can't walk properly. There's blood all over the floor. He's been shot in the throat. He gets out and walks around the corner. But that is as far as he got. Then Mystery and Zarif get into Wally's car and it drives away before the doors are even shut. The Bagan is believed to have drove to a nearby road and dropped Mystery off at a silver Volkswagen Golf and both cars were spotted on CCTV fleeing the area. Automatic number plate recognition cameras captured Wally driving Zarif from Derby to Birmingham in his Megan on the afternoon of the raid while Mystery drove to the city from Leicester. Mobile phone records placed all three men in the vicinity of Direct Source 3 Limited at around the time of the robbery. At the opening of the trial, the jury was told Mr Javid was betrayed by an inside man, Sander Van Alten, who was 50 years old who lost his job with the firm in Matter of Dre's prior to the killing. Cash drops of tens of thousands of pounds were regularly made to the warehouse and Van Alten knew where the safe was and when it was full. So Suraj Mystery was jailed for 23 years, Lemar Wally was jailed for 7 years and Sander Van Alten, the inside man, received 6 years and 8 months. So guys, this is a new story coming from West Midlands Ways. Shiboy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.